Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. What you're about to watch here on the Fantano channel is a collection of clips, a compilation, if you will, of different Let's Argue segments from our Patreon-only Let's Argue series, where we do one of those every month. And we've done so many that we've grabbed a, a few bits here and there just to give you guys a taste of how the episodes play out over there. And if you uh, want an extra Let's Argue a month, essentially, and uh, the chance to get involved in uh, a Let's Argue series, because obviously the community surrounding that is a lot more closely knit, uh, feel free to check out our Patreon page down below and uh, enjoy the clips that we have assembled in this video. You're the best. Love you. Of b b b bam. Do you really think it's morally okay to listen to Travis Scott in the wake of the Astroworld tragedy? I haven't been listening to him much since it happened, but the idea of uh, listening to an artist like Michael Jackson is fine, so on and so forth. I mean, uh, look, I, I haven't listened to much Travis Scott recently, but like, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to listen to Travis Scott. Um, I, I think it's fine. I mean, like, does Travis bear, like, responsibility on what happened uh, at his festival? Yes, but it's not, like, the kind of responsibility that, like, you know, uh, R. Kelly has for sex trafficking. It's a totally different, like, level of and kind of a responsibility there. Plus, at this point, it, it seems like Travis uh, legally is most likely going to do his best to pay his debt to society and to the families that he very much owes a, a heavy debt to. Um, I, I would say at this point, like the only reason like morally that there may be to totally just toss Travis Scott to the side uh, would be if he did everything in his power to like, you know, forego any kind of legal fees or debt that he owes to these people uh, who have loved ones who were either injured or had their lives lost in the midst of this whole thing. If Travis Scott basically just said, you know, screw you, I'm, I'm out of here, you know, uh, screw what happened to your loved ones, I'm not paying for any of this crap, uh, I'm, I'm totally just like washing my hands of this and I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna go escape to some kind of foreign country or whatever. Yeah, that'd be pretty messed up and I would say that'd be very much worthy of a like, yeah, 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 don't listen to Travis Scott ever again because that uh, shit was trash. But with that being said, like, if you want to listen to Travis Scott, if you want to listen to his new record when that eventually comes out, um, sure. If you're rude, mean, or curt to Nardwar during your interview, you are almost assuredly a dick. Honestly, when people are rude or mean to Nardwar, I, I think it's mostly because they're unfamiliar with him. They're unfamiliar with him. The people who are the most mean to him and the most rude to him are the ones who don't really see the genius in what he does and haven't seen other interviews he's done that are great. And uh, as, as a result of that, like outside of that context, his energy and his persistence can come off kind of grating or annoying. I get that. But like when you're watching him on the screen uh, and you're, you know, you're sort of audience to it, it's hilarious. It's really entertaining. It's great. It's amazing. Uh, but like being there with him in your face, if you don't, you know, know about him and you don't understand his energy and you don't get the shtick and you don't get the vibe and you don't get like the point, I could see a lot of people, and obviously like there's tons of footage of this, I could see a lot of people getting turned off really fast. But I think it's really great that he's been able to uh, make a brand for what he does, even if for the average person who's unfamiliar with it, uh, it, it might seem a little off-putting at first. For me it has to be, I sent this bitch a picture of my dick during Runaway by Kanye. Uh, not only is the lyric silly, but the way he sings it makes it all the more terrible, especially in such an emotionally grand song. I love the song otherwise, but my god, that lyric is awful. I would like to come in here and just like blindly agree with you and support this. You guys know that um, I'm not the biggest My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy fan or Runaway fan for that matter, but I, I don't mind that lyric too much and I do respect it for playing into the theme of the song overall. I mean, you talk about the song being emotionally grand, but let's think about what the song is about. I mean, the song is kind of about Kanye being like an asshole, being a piece of shit, being like a fundamentally flawed human being that like can't keep it together. He's like literally recommending that this other person who he's singing to in the song, run away, go away, like, you know, save yourself essentially. And him, you know, sending that picture of his dick, which I, I'm assuming the one he's referring to is the one that leaked out onto the internet. It's kind of funny with all the young Kanye fans out there. Like they don't know he has a dick pic online, but he in fact does. Best and worst TV show theme songs go. My favorite uh, is, is always Sunny. Per 
personally favorites are a classic America's Funniest Home Videos theme song, Cheers theme song, Golden Girls theme song, I guess the Seinfeld theme as well. A, a lot of sitcoms. I don't know why. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just really like 90s shows and sitcoms. The Simpsons! Yeah, that's the nostalgia factor there for you. The worst, like one of the worst. God, what's one of the worst? My submission for worst is the original theme song for um, uh, the Clifford cartoon. Like, the singing on it is awful. The instrumental is terrible. And I hate that the lyrics... <laughs> in the song are so tedious and literal. Like we couldn't just generally sing about Clifford or, you know, pets or love of a dog, like in, in a more abstract sense, we have to like literally describe the whole concept of the show as if like, you know, we, we needed to understand the origins of a big fucking red dog. I know it's a kid's show and I'm a full grown adult, but it's, it's a pretty old, uh, uh, song at this point as far as like TV show themes go. Um, and, and yeah, I, I just uh, remember that one being awful. Despite being one of the most treasured icons in music history, you have never formally talked about Bob Marley. Is there a good reason for this? Have you never gotten the opportunity or are you just not crazy about the style of music he produced? Uh, no, Bob Marley's got great stuff. Bob Marley is uh, an icon for a reason. I guess uh, I just haven't talked a lot about him formally because uh, he doesn't have, I guess, a ton of direct influence on a lot of the artists that, you know, I review day to day. So there's not, you know, a, a lot of opportunity to say, oh yeah, there's a huge, you know, Marley reference on this or, uh, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, him as a songwriter, as a vocalist, um, and together with the Wailers as well, made a lot of groundbreaking reggae and roots reggae music. I especially like a lot of the more political side of the roots reggae stuff, uh, you know, which is uh, uh, where I sort of appreciate Marley the most. If I have any issues with Marley, uh, it's more about like kind of the public perception and, and, and I guess like, you know, consumption of him than it has to do with uh, anything artistically that he did over the years. You know, I think he had a great mind. I think he was a great lyricist and artist overall. But like MLK, I feel like a lot of the, you know, uh, white music industry has like, you know, Santa claus him to the point where, you know, he's more of an icon and he's not really like remembered or appreciated for the super radical politics uh, that he, you know, actually held to across his career. Because when you take into account Bob Marley and the things that he, you know, said in his most radical songs and said in his interviews, like he's, he's so much more culturally than just the, you know, one reggae artist that any guy off the street could name. Which, again, I know has nothing to do with Bob Marley personally. That's not his fault, obviously. But, uh, you know, I almost took what you said here as like a <laughs> challenge to say something in regards to Bob Marley that I'm not crazy about. And to the extent that there is something, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Which running joke within your comment section is your favorite and least favorite? An example being, nice review, Anthony, but you didn't have to. Yeah, that, that's... That's actually one of my least favorite, if, if not my least favorite. I just think that one's kind of annoying. At this point, I honestly don't really like much of any of the jokes uh, down in <laughs> the comments. And not that um, uh, th th there's nothing funny in the comments. There are actually lots of funny comments. It's just that usually the funniest ones are the ones that aren't like, you know, trying to fit into some bullshit repeated trope that you guys have been like harping on for years. And, and that's kind of my issue generally with like, you know, uh, the, the meme comment formats and all the reviews and videos in general, because um, I, I feel like you guys haven't really come up with a new one in years. I feel like it's getting kind of old. I mean, again, I'm not like against memes and repeated jokes, obviously. I uh, share in a lot of that uh, stuff and I'm fine with that stuff in general, but uh, you know, you, you gotta get a new one in rotation eventually. Like, where's the new one? I think albums named after colors are lame as fuck. Example, most of Weezer's discography. Well, what about the uh, uh, album colors? from Between the Buried and Me. But anyway, back to Weezer. I mean, look, technically, they're all titled Weezer. Technically, they're all self-titled. They just happen to be self-titled, but also color-coded. And I still think to this day that Weezer has uh, more titles in their catalog that are just regular titles than just simply colors, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, and, and frankly, I would rather they come out with a purple album than they come out with a, I don't know, Hurley? 
or uh, fucking Ratitude. Like, again, to rewind, Hurley. You named your album after a fucking character in a TV show? Are you fucking kidding me? Like a TV show that is like long over at this point and, and none of your younger audience, even some of your older audience, like has no context for whatsoever. Why aren't you wearing in your reviews that beautiful flower shirt from Weezer's Worst to Best No More? It deserves the prime place in your wardrobe, even better than yellow flannel. It is a cool shirt. It is a great shirt. I love the shirt. It doesn't, it doesn't fit me anymore doesn't fit me anymore. My shoulders are actually broader than they were when I first started wearing that shirt, and, and that shirt don't fit me. It doesn't fit me anymore. Got the gun show going. Not really. If Billie Eilish had to work with a producer who isn't her brother, who would you pick? You brought some nominees into the fold as well. Okay, like, good, good question. I'm gonna say Arca. I feel like in terms of like the raw experimentation and like the dark nuances and subtleties that often turn up in Arca's work. Not that I'm saying like, I think Billy would sound great over all the beats from like kick three. <laughs> Maybe if Billy were in like more of a kick four or a kick five mode, uh, maybe that would sort of like work for her a lot better. Obviously it wouldn't like be nearly as poppy as the stuff that she's known for, but uh, you know, could be cool. Koi LeRae doesn't deserve all the hate she is getting. Her recent tweets about feeling bullied were concerning and the internet Twitter needs to care more about not dogpiling people who are openly stating they are not handling stuff very well. Makes me feel sad. We seem to have lost our humanity just recently. <laughs> Now, I wouldn't say that was a recent occurrence. I do think Koi LeRae does get an inordinate amount of hate. I mean, I don't think her music is the worst in the world. Uh, you know, she's not like super crazy lyrical or anything like that, but I think she's got some fun tracks. I mean, I get it when I see like clips of her live and, and stuff. Sometimes it seems a little awkward or like it's not quite working, but I think, you know, people aren't taking into account the contexts in which her music typically pops off or makes the most sense. Because like when I see her songs going crazy viral on TikTok and people are like having fun with the lyrics and the hooks and the beats on there and you know, doing dances and routines and so on and so forth. Like when I see that and I hear that, I'm like, okay, cool. And that's ultimately another thing about the internet. Stuff doesn't really stay localized. So, you know, songs or artists that may be meant for or may just simply appear to a certain group of people who are in a certain space on the internet, often it ends up crossing into another area, another, you know, sort of like section of the online world where people who hate it or are most likely going to, you know, ridicule it or uh, dogpile on it, they get exposed to it. And then of course, like, you know, the, the reactions, the predictable reactions that occur as a result of that occur. But yeah, I mean, like while Koi LeRae is not the greatest in the world, I, I, I think she's overhated. <laughs> And there you have the clips. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, appreciate greatly anybody who, as a result of this video, has come through and joined up with our Patreon. Thank you if you have. Uh, even if you didn't, thank you for watching this video. And we will see you in the next one. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, forever.